um, I wanted to uh, just talk a little bit about uh, Jetty and Lamar and just wanted to make sure that we acknowledge them, um, both obviously incredible human beings that uh, had such respect across the organization. Um, so I wanted to thank, um, you know, Jetty and Lamar personally on behalf of, of everybody, uh, what they brought to the table. Um, every day was a great day around those guys, those two. Um, added incredibly to our culture, off the floor, on the floor, our tenacity, um, you know, and, and some of the most fun lineups uh, that we had were with some of those guys or those guys. And I just wanted to thank them. Uh, I think they also helped contribute to a culture uh, that you're seeing really blossom and a culture that we have now of, of players that want to come. And I think we'll talk about the free agency uh, period. Um, definitely want to get your questions on our acquisitions. But uh, the thing that I was most, um, you know, happy with um, was with the players wanting to come to Cleveland and be a part of this thing. And uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't give Jetty and Lamar credit for uh, amplifying our culture, uh, making this a fun place to be. And I think other players see that. Um, and that went into certainly our free agency and our, us being able to attract some of the best uh, players in the game. So with that, I'll, I'll open it up to, to questions. Um, so thanks, Sam. Serena, go ahead. Hey, Kobe. Look, I mean, a lot of moves already this summer between re-signing Karras and acquiring Struess and signing Yang and Jerome. And just what's been the motivation behind just your off-season strategy and what needs have you felt like have been addressed? Yeah, so I think going into this off-season, um, I, I think I told you guys not, not too long ago uh, that I wasn't going to make sweeping changes. Um, I was really excited about our core, uh, our youth, and really having patience with this, this group. Um, and now the time is to uh, really complement those pieces, um, you know, with some, with some shooting, some spacing. And I'm really, really happy with, um, you know, our acquisitions. And that was, you know, be, being very targeted and intentional to put around, um, you know, our core four, if you will, uh, some really, um, some really dynamic shooting. And we talk about Max Struess and George Yang um, and Ty Jerome, you know, those really add to um, our offense in a dynamic way. And we really want to diversify our offense. And so uh, being able to add those additions is huge. And then, you know, I know uh, Chris Fedor wrote about this, but really Karras was the number one uh, offseason uh, target for us uh, to re-sign him uh, to make sure he was in the fold. It's really valuable to have a six starter, uh, a guy that can step in and do anything for you at a given notice. And I think he's been a very, very underrated acquisition for us uh, for what he's been able to do. And to keep him with this group is really key and was really key for us. So, um, you know, very, very excited about our offseason so far. Next question is from Chris Vidor. Hey, Kobe, how's it going? Hey, just in Vegas, it's uh, 110 right now. So taking this from my hotel room. <laughs> Going back to Amani and the selection of him in the second round, given some of the baggage that he comes with, what made you guys comfortable taking that risk on him at 49? Well, I think we, you know, we go pretty deep in terms of, um, you know, our background and understood some of the challenges there. Um, but I, but but really excited about the upside of a 19 year old six nine uh, shooter really and I think for him having conversations with him you know the last couple of years have been really hard for him and and having that amount of expectation and pressure is hard on anybody and so I think our job is just alleviate that you know take that off the table there's no expectation here um, you know you don't have to come in here and change the or shock the world um, and and really learn from this group uh, and have fun again. And so we're excited to see him debut tonight um, and, and really help him with tools to, to get into a routine here. Uh, but he has a runway and he doesn't have to prove something right away, which I think was um, part of the problem the last two years. Everyone wanted to be the next KD. Um, and it's okay if, if, if he's not that, um, if he blossoms into a rotational player uh, down the road that can really help us space the floor and shoot, which I think is one of his best traits. Um, that'd be great. Uh, but, but no expectation for him um, and certainly have patience and let him, let him grow. 
And then Kobe, there's been so much conversation about the future of Donovan Mitchell, despite the fact that he is still under contract. Just how concerned are you guys if you give, if you put an extension in front of him and he doesn't sign it, that the threat of New York or another team looms? Yeah, listen, uh, all I can go off of uh, is Donovan's actions and his intentions. Um, he's with us in Vegas right now. He's super excited about the future. He'll be at the game tonight. Um, you know, he's been at, in Cleveland multiple times this offseason already. He's worked out with guys. He's bringing guys with him uh, wherever he is. And all you can go off of are those actions and how genuinely um, how genuine he talks about his experience in Cleveland. And look, he had the best year of his career uh, in year one with us. I think he sees the runway of, 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 of the players around him and the youth around him. So all I can go off of is uh, his actions and his intentions, and they've been all really genuine. He also helped us out a lot uh, during this free agency period. So um, he wants this place to be great. He wants to win here. Um, and, you know, in terms of the contract, we'll, we'll have those internal discussions um, and, and hopefully, hopefully keep them. But listen, um, we have to, we have to produce and, and perform as an organization. Uh, but I know he's, he's really, really happy here and he'll tell you that. Next question, Danny Cunningham. Hey Kobe. Um, obviously during the free agency period, it, it doesn't take, you don't have to be too tuned in to realize you guys really targeted shooting, especially mm -hmm. with Struess and Yang, but how important was targeting guys that had been part of winning cultures in the past for you guys? <laughs> Yeah, Danny, I, I think um, I'm glad you bring that up uh, because that really went into um, how intentional we were in terms of just not adding somebody that had um, a great shooting percentage. Um, we went out and got, you know, so it's funny, Max Struess and George Niang will be well, Max one and then George three in terms of playoff experience on our team. One and three, the second they, they, they touched the court for the Cavaliers. Donovan's two. And when you talk about playoff experience, you're talking about some rough playoff series that they've been through uh, with a lot of adversity in the East. Um, you know, Max Struess has been a starter on uh, an Eastern Conference finals team and then a finals team in back-to-back -back years. I don't know what that does for your confidence, but it's really going to infuse some confidence in this group, knowing the wars and battles that those guys have gone through. They got edge, they got toughness, um, they have physicality. Uh, you have to be able to compete at that level. And that's what we're trying to do uh, with this group. And, and so adding uh, that level of playoff experience with the shooting um, was really, really exciting for us. Um, I think in terms of what they do, um, you know, outside of just shooting is, you know, Max creates a dynamic offense for you, a lot of flow, a lot of movement a lot of gravitational pull where he doesn't even have to touch the ball. And I think we're going to see a lot of that. We got very stagnant last year and we asked Darius and Donovan, two immensely talented uh, players to really drive offense for us. This is going to make it a lot easier for them. Uh, we'll have sets and uh, sets and, and, and different actions um, in the half court that will be hard to guard. Um, just watch um, his movement in Miami and, and tell us that's not going to help us immensely. Um, you know, I think, I think they bring a, a lot of different things to the table. You know, George also, um, throughout his whole career, just getting back to the shooting piece, has been a 40% three-point shooter uh, for the past five years. And I think everyone in the gym knows what he's going to do. Um, and he's still has shooting that incredible percentage. So he's a really um, important piece for us. Both are high-character guys. Ty Jerome's a high-character individual um, and I, I'll go back to it again why I'm, I'm so excited about um, this group or this, these acquisitions. Um, what's really, um, for me, um, exciting is, you know, for Max and for George and for Ty, we were the number one destination. This is, this is the team they wanted to come to. They saw the fit. Um, they saw the upside. And they think that we can go a long ways. And so when you talk to these guys, ask them, you know, was Cleveland, you know, your first destination, they're going to tell you that. And for me, um, that's really exciting, you know, for, 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 to have us be a free agent destination hasn't always been the case. And, and, and we've become that in large part because of this group. Um, Darius is someone people want to play with. Um, you know, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, Donovan Mitchell, um, 
you, you name it, these guys want to come and play with those guys. And so we've created that, uh, that destination um, well, for these free agents. Uh, and that's, that's pretty cool. And then how do you expect that added shooting to kind of highlight what Evan Mobley is able to do offensively in year three compared to what he's been able to do in the past? Well, Evan, um, almost to a fault, is, is so unselfish. He's a great passer. We want to really diversify our offense around Evan a lot more. And so when you add this, the floor spacing, it's only going to make him more dynamic. We want to see him rebound push uh, a lot more this year with spacing into the corners, right? And so he's going to make the right play. Can we play out of him out of the hub um, and, and really um, accentuate his playmaking skills and his passing ability? And so I think, um, to your point, uh, just as much as going to help the guards, it's going to help Evan as well. We're going to see Evan at the five a lot this year too. Um, and some four out around one offense. And that's going to be really hard for defenses to guard. And so I just want to, you know, we're going to be way more diverse in our attack, uh, way more intentional uh, when we get across half court. But what we want, what we want to try to get to um, and the floor spacing really, really helps that. Next question from Nate Ulrich. Hey, Kobe, um, can you please expound on, um, you know, how Donovan helped you guys in free agency? Um, I don't want to expand upon it too much. Um, these guys are friends and they, uh, they talk. Um, you know, Donovan goes back to, 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 to Utah with George and it's one of his, one of his best friends. Uh, but look, I think the thing that, um, you know, we can't control is, is um, you know, players talk. And the things we can control are the experiences that players have in the building, how they feel like they're being treated, uh, performance plans for them. Um, and when guys have their best years um, at a place, they're going to speak glowingly of a place. And so um, we don't know what happens offline and what they're saying. But when Max, does, Max Struess does his research and calls different players within his, uh, you know, in, in his orbit that have been to our place um, and they talk glowingly of the place, it helps. It really does help. And so I'm not going to say exactly what, what Donovan did or didn't do, but I did know, I do know that he spoke uh, glowingly of the place and, and we can tell. And, you know, related to this conversation, uh, obviously you mentioned uh, Niang playing with Donovan in Utah, uh, you know, and uh, Ty Jerome, a childhood friend and childhood teammate of Donovan. I'm sure you like those players for, for other reasons, but um, how nice of a benefit or a bonus is it to, that those guys have that history with, uh, you know, your, your all-star, uh, all-NBA guy? Really fortunate. Um, you know, Donovan – is he's immensely talented and, and intellectual uh, off the court. And so, you know, that he's a, a VP for the Players Association. Um, he has a lot of, of interactions and, and conversations with um, the league as a whole. And that's going from the league office all the way up to Adam Silver, um, all the way to the two-way players on, um, you know, on our, our, on our bench. And, and that goes to Imani Bates that he worked out with for two straight summers in New York. So his, his wherewithal, his orbit is, is really large. Um, we, we, we love it. Uh, he gives us honest feedback um, and he's really, really helpful. So um, I, uh, I couldn't be more happy with him as a person. This is a human being and, and having really, uh, informative conversations with him about how how we should make and mold uh, this team. Um, he's also very realistic. He, he knows um, where we were in terms of our cap and what we were, um, you know, realistically could do. Um, and I think, you know, we are all, not just Donovan, we're all thrilled with what we could achieve with, with very limited uh, resources uh, to add to this group. But I will say, you know, give the, I give the players the credit because, Guys want to come to Cleveland to play with them. That, that's, the, that's the large, that's a big picture. That's a big takeaway uh, from this offseason. Joe G, next. Hey, Kobe. Um, hey. You talked about being really targeted and the guys you were looking at. Uh, can you talk about uh, bringing Ty Jerome in? So Ty, um, I go pretty far back with, with Ty. I've known him for, for a long time. And... Um, you know, it, it uh, 
it's someone that I'm thrilled to add um, because he's going to grow on everybody once he gets to this organization. Um, he's just going to keep chipping away with his basketball IQ, uh, with his character, with his personality. Um, you know, he, he's, he's an absolute fountain. You know, we talk about we want fountains, not drains. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a guy that's going to come in every day as a fountain, a giver, um, regardless of the role. But we do know he can play. And he happened to have one of the best games of his career against the Cavaliers uh, when Golden State decided to shut everyone down. And we thought it was going to be a cakewalk. And, and he came into this building and really showed us um, who he is. So um, we're excited to add him. I also think, you know, people forget, like, he's 6'5". He's got real size. I think he can play alongside the guards, um, play some three at times if we need to um, in a second unit. So he just gives us a lot of versatility off the bench. Um, and, and you'll see Joe, when you're around him, you'll just, you'll just fall in love. He's, he's a great person. And then at this point in the off season, just from your viewpoint, how do you feel about the big man group? Obviously you have Evan and Jarrett. What are you looking at behind that? How do you feel about that? So we also, the trade hasn't gone through yet. So I can't talk about uh, another acquisition that that's coming that has some real size and athletic ability, but, um, I obviously, I think we're very, very fortunate. I think when you have two, um, you know, seven foot guys that defend the rim and can switch out, it really gives you the luxury. Um, and so do I feel good about Evan Mobley and Jared Allen? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, behind them, I think we've added, um, you know, George Niang as well, who can play some wing, can play some space for. I think that really is an interesting dynamic to add, you know, 40% three point shooter around those guys to really accentuate uh, who they are offensively as well. Um, and then we're working on, like I said, that backup five position. Um, but no, I mean, look, like we have all world defensive players uh, in our front court. And so, you know, can we add to that? Absolutely. I think we're, we're looking at, at that as well. But to start there, um, you know, the number one defense in the league uh, because of those two, um, I think we're in a good spot. Thanks, Cody. Next question from Dale Ryder. Daryl, I'm uh, curious, what impact did Denver uh, winning the finals have on your overall view of NBA championship team building and where the Cavaliers are uh, currently? First of all, do we have how many bobbleheads? How many Cavalier bobbleheads do we have in the back there? And do we need to amp that up for you, uh, BJ? BJ, can we get? We got to get him a Donovan, a Darius. Um, who else? Ricky last year. We get you some limited edition. We got it. We got. We, I don't feel like we're we're uh, represented enough in that. That's an awesome uh, backdrop, and I don't think we have enough representation there, Daryl. So work with us. All right. Okay. And we'll get, we'll, we'll get you there. Um, I think, I, listen, Dan, I think it's a, it's a great question. I think we've always looked at Denver as a model, even before they won the championship, because, you know, um, was it five years ago, you know, after the departure of LeBron, we did different studies around the league about rebuilds and which rebuilds were successful. Obviously hitting on the draft is the most important part. Um, and that sort of that model of all right, drafting well, developing players and staying patient was, was definitely um, driven from the success of, of, of Denver. And to see it happen, you know, in year eight for Jokic, um, I'm sure for them is really gratifying. I think it's great for the league. I think we get, t- uh, you know, I think in this media age, um, everyone wants something now. And every year there's a big player that could be on the market. And there's a drive to go do that, go gut your roster and go get that player. Uh, I think we made our splash uh, last summer with Donovan. Um, you know, like I said, you know, we were going to make sweeping changes. I don't think we did anything outlandish uh, this, this off season, um, just smart tactical moves. And, and like, you know, um, you know, Calvin Booth did this year with Denver, really s- small tactical moves that really helped. Denver with KCP signing and Brucey B, Bruce Brown, um, those were really integral in their draft pick, um, integral to the core that they have built. Um, they've had failures in the playoffs, they've had setbacks, they've had injuries, um, and they've stayed the course and they've been really, really patient. 
Um, you know, is that going to be our, our, our road? We'll see. But I do appreciate, um, you know, an ownership group that really buys into the core and gives them the patience to really grow and blossom. Um, for us, you know, just looking at the comparables and we're not saying, you know, Evan's going to be Jokic at all. You know, Jokic is the best player in the world right now. Um, you know, Evan's in year three. But what does Evan look like year five? What does he look like year eight? Um, I, I'm thrilled to find out. We just all have to have the patience uh, to go through, um, you know, these years and, and have great years doing it and enjoy the process doing it. And um, I think Denver is a great, a great model for that. Daryl's still on mute. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You, you had said after that Knicks series, Kobe, that you were not going to make any sweeping changes. So how uh, difficult, because the easy thing would have been to make uh, or try to make another splash. So just how difficult was it to resist that temptation and stay the course with your core belief of sticking with the, this young group? Not, not at all, really. I mean, <laughs> we're, like I said, we're very, very fortunate the players that we have and our best players are high, high character guys that want to be in Cleveland. Um, we're really lucky. We're fortunate. We, we got that part of it right now. It's how do you supplement around that group with some dynamic shooting? Um, and, and I think also bringing guys that fit the, the culture, um, you know, the age group, you know, everyone's right around the same age and entering their prime. Uh, Max Ruse is just 27 years old and we have him under contract as he's entering his prime and what he knows, how he knows how to be successful. Um, so I'm, I'm thrilled. It really wasn't, it really wasn't hard at all. Um, you know, if, if you, if you spent time and been around Darius Garland, you know, that was the most crazy rumor you've ever heard of in your life. You know, we've, 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 We've drafted him. We've raised him to be an all-star. He's under contract for five more years. Um, he loves it here. That, that's not hard for me. Chris, go ahead. Kobe, you've talked a lot about Struess and, and what you like about him. But, like, why was it that he was such a priority for you guys in free agency? And why were you willing to go above the mid-level and give up Jetty and give up Lamar, two guys that you talked about were integral to your success over the last couple of years to get Max? Yeah, I think, um, listen, Max is really, um, has really created a niche for himself. Um, when you talk about a movement shooter, you know, it's, uh, it's something to go get, you know, some, some shooting that has high percentages. And it's entirely another thing to get somebody that with his skill sets. Uh, we don't have that. And, I, and I'm not making the comparison because Kyle Corver is one of the best shooters to ever do it. But think back to the days when we had Kyle in that movement and how, how much stress that put on the defense. Um, you have to game plan for guys like that. Um, there's gravitational pull when they don't even touch the ball. So there's one thing to be spot shooting in the corner. Uh, obviously, we want to get better at that. Him and George are some of the best in the, in the game at the corner shot, which will be open a lot for them. Uh, but what are they doing in terms of movement to get us out of just being stagnant? Um, what sets are we putting in for them? Um, you can really run offense um, through them in a lot of ways, even if they're not touching it. Um, JJ, JJ Reddick's another one um, that would have great movement off the ball and really helped. Um, you know, you think about those Philly teams, some of the best teams uh, where he was really moving without the ball and helping them. And so that's why uh, we think he's more than just a shooter. He's a dynamic spacer. He's a movement shooter. Um, and he's going to get guys open um, just by, um, you know, how, how he plays the game. I think the other piece, too, is you know, the last two um, playoffs, we have to watch him a lot. Um, and listen, these are tough series. The people are locking in on him, and that's why he has no space to shoot. That's why the vast majority of his shots are contested. Um, and, and he's playing deep, deep into uh, the East. Um, and so we have to see him a lot, and, and we just coveted that. We covered that experience. Um, we coveted his movement, and then just finding, about, finding out about him as a person, uh, we knew he would fit. And Kobe, you mentioned the conversation or the rumors about Darius Garland and all that stuff and not making any sweeping changes. 
Will the core four be together when you guys start this coming season? Yes, I intend that to be the case. And um, listen, I always, I, you know, never make promises in case something were to miraculously happen. Um, but all four know how important they are uh, to this. And, and no conversations have happened outside of teams calling, doing their job. Um, no, no conversations have happened substantial that uh, we envision, you know, breaking up this core. It's a core that won 51 games last year um, and, and, and really has a lot more a runway left. Um, and I, I hope, I hope, you know, I hope that's the case. I think we're going to continue to get better. Last two quick ones from Nate Ulrich and then Danny Cunningham. Hey, Kobe, uh, given he's from the backyard here and uh, the family legacy, I, I feel compelled to ask you about what went into giving Pete and Ansel a look. <laughs> um, we've always liked Pete. You know, it's, it's, it, it's amazing. It's really cool because, you know, if you've been to our practice facility, um, we have all our retired jerseys up there as well. And every time I see him running around and, um, you know, making threes and, and, and playing hard and practice, I'm looking up and I see the Nance jersey. Um, it's just pretty cool. But we've seen him in our, you know, in our gym since he was really, really young, working out. Uh, obviously, we tracked him throughout his college career. It's wonderful, wonderful family. Uh, but Pete has a chance. You know, Pete has a chance. He's actually opened up some eyes in this um, mini camp going into summer league about what he can do. So, listen, he's going to have, have every opportunity in the world, right, uh, because of who, who he is and his namesake. But I think he's going to carve out a little niche for himself here in the league. And um, I'm not going to I'm not going to rule him out. I think he has a chance. What do you what what about his game makes you think that real quick? Well, I, I think listen, I think his height, his versatility. Um, you know, he he, he plays hard. Uh, he can spot shoot, um, and, and he, again, he has a credible attitude and work ethic um, that's going to keep growing. He's going to keep getting better. Both were late bloomers. You remember Larry went to Wyoming and was only had like two Division One scholarship offers, um, and now he's multiple contracts deep and a really important part to uh, the Pelicans. So I think, you know, Pete, if, if he's following that trajectory of a late bloomer, like his brother, um, he's only going to continue to get better.